welcome everyone. Welcome to IP's International, International Programs Alumni Week and welcome to In the Kitchen with Panama. We're so thrilled that you have joined us today and that you are looking forward to cooking some delicious Panamanian food. Um, that's my very brief, very general welcome. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to our friends in Panama who will be showing us how to create this delicious meal. So Valerie and Dr. Langoni, take it away. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you today. We are gonna be sharing with you some very good uh, Panamanian dishes, very traditional of Panama. Uh, everybody coming to Panama has to try those. It's a, it's a must do. Uh, we selected things that are representative of the Panamanian cuisine and also something that you can find almost everywhere in Panama and easy to prepare. We should be able to uh, complete these uh, menus in about 35, 40 minutes. So if you are ready, let me just introduce myself, Carlos. I'm the director of the Panama program and Valerie, uh, my assistant, but today she's the boss. She's the main <laughs> chef. I'm just here to assist her. So uh, the uh, appetizer that we're going to be prepare, preparing is a ceviche, ceviche de corvina. I'm going to speak about the ceviche a little later because we need to get started on the main dishes that are going to take a little longer. And Valerie then is going to start working on the uh, chicken rice, arroz con pollo. Uh, it's a, a little variation of the uh, Spanish paella, uh, but it's a dish that is very tasty, very traditional of Panama. Everywhere you go, if you go to festivals in Panama in the interior, uh, you for sure can get arroz con pollo. Uh, and for dessert, Valerie is going to be preparing uh, coconut cookies, also very tradition of the interior of Panama. And uh, so I'm going to pass it on to Valerie to uh, start working on the main course and on the dessert. So Valerie. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Today I am playing chef because I'm not, <laughs> but I love cooking. So let's get right to work. First, we're gonna, oh, we previously um, diced and shredded and, and prepared everything. So we only come here to mix and have it ready. So let's start. We're gonna oil the pot. And um, we're gonna start pouring all the the chopped, uh, diced ingredients. Let me begin with the garlic. Your red smells good. <laughs> Love the smell of garlic. Let's do some onion. Can you hear it? You can't smell it, but you can hear it. <laughs> some green bell peppers. Keep stirring so it doesn't, everything makes it well. We do some celery. Oh. 
And then we're gonna go with some soy sauce. All the ingredients are gonna be mixing. Oregano, the onion, garlic, the onion powder, the garlic powder. Oh, there are lots of ingredients. A lot of ingredients and there's no specific order when you're stir frying all of this. So once you get all the veggies, the diced veggies and everything, then you go with the spices. Here's some oregano. Garlic powder. Onion. Huh. This one is, could you help oh, me okay. Dr. Langoni? It's close. We also have the olives and the capers that goes into the stir frying also. Not the liquid, just the olives and capers. There you go. Okay. Could you be, maybe you could pour in it as well as the capers. Uh, about half of these or about? I would say yeah we also have the tomato paste which is going to be used as well now do you want me to mix it or separate uh you could mix it all mix. together okay. yeah maybe you might want to put some more well okay. I have some, some here some black pepper and this is to the taste Salt, we're gonna leave it till the end because maybe you won't need to add any more salt. Now, is that enough about half of that? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Because <laughs> we have the broth from the chicken when we prepared it and we use that and that has a taste. So you might not need to add any more salt. So here are olives and capers. We have some of the tomato paste. We should have some music also, shouldn't we? <laughs> some typical. We add some vinegar, half teaspoon. You stir fry, mix it well. I don't know if you can um, show Pedro how the vegetables are mixed with the tomato paste. Um, what are we? Okay, the saffron. We have two packs of Goya saffron. And I think all these ingredients are, they're accessible in the US also. Yeah. I, I checked with my, my son and he said that yeah, most of the things they, they can find in Publix. Now is the time to pour 
the shredded chicken. And that's about, uh, is by weight or by? No, the recipe um, asks for two chicken breasts and two thighs. You could either use all of it with chicken breast or only thighs because anyway, after you boil it, mm -hmm. you have to shred it. Now, do you season it before you boil? Yeah, yeah. you season it like half of have an onion and then you use the chicken boils. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. And you may add any other seasoning you want to the chicken when you're going to boil it. So now we, we have some audience here also today because they are going to be the ones giving the verdict if, it, <laughs> if it's good or not. So at the end, we are going to hear from them. Okay, once the chicken is mixed, and if you may, um, Pedro, I don't know if you, if you may see, it has already been all mixed with the saffron, the tomato paste, the vegetables, everything. Now it's time for the rice. So here I have, the recipe says two, I added one extra one because I think mine is going to come out a little bit bigger. So we pour the rice, mix a little, little bit. And at this point, we are going to use the chicken broth. Let's say that you don't have chicken broth, you can also use water, regular water. But the chicken broth gives a special gives a special taste. taste. So we're gonna pour it. So when they boil, when they boil the, the chicken at the beginning, they should save the Exactly. The liquids to use the later. liquids from the boiled chicken, you save it and you are going to pour it until you cover the rice. My mom used to say just an inch above the rice of water or liquid. So, and if it's not enough, we complete. So, now you didn't put any salt yet, did you? No, I haven't. At this point, we need a little bit more. My grandmother used to do this just to make sure that the level of water was good if not. If it doesn't stand by itself, it needs more. Wow, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, huh? yes. And um, like right now, I would say that I need a little bit more of rice because of the, the uh -huh. amount. Okay. So I'll be coming right no, back. Over there. Oh, okay. So I would do. So this is the, let's say the Panamanian version of the, of the paella and the uh, we could say also uh, a little bit of the risotto, even though the risotto is a little more liquid, a little more liquid than the, the chicken rice and the paella. But uh, actually in Panama, there is another dish that is also very similar to the Italian risotto. Uh, how do you call that, Valerie? The, Uh, el guacho. El guacho. Guacho that you, you can do guacho uh, of seafood and you can also make guacho of pork. of pork. So okay, so here I'm here, here I am with some more rice because of the big pot that I have with a little, little bit more of rice. Okay. 
water. Maybe I can do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> like my grandmother used to do. Not really, but I don't want to pour any more water. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, okay. Now the trick here is that good point of you thought. You want to have enough liquid so that you don't have to add it later, right? Is it a is there a problem that you feel like later you need to pour a little more chicken broth or, or what, or you don't want to do that? Usually, as I learned. Um, less is better than more at the beginning. Why? Because if, if when the liquid is absorbed by the rice and it happens that you might need to pour some more water because the grains have not popped, mm -hmm. then you sprinkle some more water okay. and you cover it. You put it or simmer and it will eventually but if you pour a lot of water from the beginning, mm -hmm. it gets like a risotto, smooshy, right, right. and then you can't do anything. Yeah, you don't want that to happen. We right? don't want you that want to happen. You want the rice to be so, not, not to be sticky. Exactly. Yeah. So now that we have poured the water, we have to let it boil and the water to be absorbed. Once, once that's done, then we're going to pour the peas and carrots on top and the fancy pimentos for garnishing. So we're gonna leave this here for it to start boiling. Now, so we're gonna get started on something else? The cookies. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. The cookies. So the cookies are very e easy. And I think I'm gonna go over there just to make sure that everybody can see. Very sweetie, but, but for people that like coconut, it's delicious, you know, having a little piece of uh, uh, coconut cookie. And you can find all over Panama, if you go to the interior, uh, any uh, store that sells souvenirs, probably are gonna be able to buy little packets with uh, coconut cookies and, uh, and milk cookies as well. Well, mm -hmm. those are very you traditional. I, I want to say something. You might have noticed that I ha I had um, soy sauce, but I didn't add it. Actually, when cooking, sometimes you have uh, an original recipe and you don't necessarily need to use depending on how it tastes, how it looks. And to my knowledge, at, you know, in my experience, I didn't really need it the soy sauce, so you might not have to mm -hmm. add it, or maybe you add a little bit, just not to make it too salty. Can I taste a little bit of this oh, sauce? Yes. Oh, yes, you may. Very good. And actually, it has already a, a, a little bit of salt. You, exactly. You can feel a little bit of salt there, so you won't have to add too much. Exactly. The capers, the mm -hmm. olives, yeah. those all those things add a little bit of salt to the recipe. Okay, so now I need a measuring cup where I'm going to mix. And just to make sure that I'm doing it right, I'm gonna have my little cheat sheet here. So we need three and a half cups. You have a measure? Yeah, I have the, the cup. I just need oh, to, okay. Your, okay. Your, your... Your assistant to do something. Yeah. Great. And then let's measure this. Okay, almost the three and a half, a little bit more. Now, this is what we are using here. Okay, coconut flake. A little bit more. 
Okay, here we go. Now we use three quarts cups of sweetened condensed milk. Well, that's much better than my measure. Let me see. Oh. Actually, I'm going to need yours. Yours has exactly the measurement I need. Three quarts of condensed milk. And I would add just a little bit more. That never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> we add it to the cookies to the now Valor has already preheated the oven to what temperature more or less 375 375 degrees yeah, we okay. need to we need to double check we have another assistant mr archer two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Where is my big? Yeah. Mm. No. no, it wasn't this one. It was C. 375. 375, yeah. Two and a half tablespoons. I just can't find my, oh, never mind. I'll use this. I have to check. I don't remember where I left the, the tablespoon measurement. So. Mm -hmm. We have two uh, and a half it's tablespoons. About how long does the cookie stay in the oven? Uh, that's gonna be like 15 minutes, I think. 15 minutes. One, two, three, four. I am using a half teaspoon measurement because I can't find my one, uh, one tablespoon measurement, I meant. And five. Okay. We need half teaspoon, half teaspoon almond. Where's the almond? Here it is. The rice is boiling. We need it for it to simmer to go down. You're going to need vanilla also. I have the vanilla right mm -hmm. here. Okay. And just a little bit more. Doesn't hurt. I love the smell of almond. And vanilla is one teaspoon. One teaspoon and a little bit more. <laughs> so once we have all the ingredients, we mix and we mix. Valerie and Dr. Lingoni, as y'all are mixing up the cookies, we have some questions in the chat. Folks are wanting to know if you are on campus at FSU Panama, where's the kitchen that you're in right now? Yes, we are cooking from the, the kitchen at the dormitories. Uh, this is where normally students do their meals and prepare their meals and do the cooking. And that's where we are right now, maybe Pedro uh, at the end can give a little 
a little uh, overview of what the place looks like, but not now, maybe, maybe later we can do that. At this moment, um, I have the coconut with the condensed milk and all the other ingredients mixed. And I personally, I think it's a little bit too. You need a little more milk? So I yeah. would pour, no measurements, just to the eye, a little bit more mm -hmm. and mix. Check the rice, make sure it's uh, still, still, still. It's, oh, it's on high for the water, the liquid to. Okay, so now. You need the baking sheet. The baking sheet. Where did it's I? Right there, it's right there. <clears throat> Thank you. And, uh, yeah. The tray. The tray. I don't know if there's a way to cut it. Looks like yes. Now, is this about okay or to be? Just, just it there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I will do at this point, at this moment, spray a little bit of. Uh, Hand spray so it sticks. And we are going to serve the cookies. We use a regular spoon. and we keep serving to put it in the oven. At this point, I'm going to move myself to another side so Dr. Langoni starts with the following recipe. Meanwhile, our rice is still cooking. So I'll be back when the tray is all served. And now we are going to work on the ceviche. The ceviche is very simple to make, but the only, the only problem is that it has to marinate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the, the process for mixing the ingredients and uh, we're gonna let it uh, marinate, but I have one prepared already that we are gonna then present it the way we normally see here in Panama. Now, people say that the ceviche is original from Peru. Uh, I don't know if that's actually true. Valerie, do you know anything about it? Well, what I've heard is the same, that it's yeah. from Peru. Yeah, it probably came from Peru, but uh, we have the way that Panamanians like it. At least this is my, my favorite ceviche. It's a ceviche made uh, out of corvina, sea which bass? is sea bass, but any white fish uh, will do it. You, you just need to make sure that there are no bones. It's a very white uh, piece of fillet. Uh, and that's all you need. In addition to the fish, you're gonna need uh, onions, you're gonna need lemon, you're gonna need a, a little bit of celery and a little bit of uh, parsley or uh, how do you call it? The, the Italian, how do you call it, Valerie? 
culantro. Cilantro. 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 Which the, is the what Italian we're using. Cilantro, yeah. The leaf is a little softer than the, the, the parsley. And for those of you that like uh, hot pepper, we have a little, little piece of uh, hot pepper to kick it up a notch. Uh, but if you don't like hot and spice, don't use it because it's, it's very hot. That, so I'm going to go ahead and start with me. May, may I add that pepper that Dr. Langoni is using in Panama? It is called ahi chombo. So it's real hot. Now I have here two nice pieces of sea bass fillet, which we are going to slice it in bite-sized pieces, okay? So not too big, but also not too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in strips like, like this one here. And then after that, then we we cut in little little cubes, uh, about uh, no more than half an inch in size. Can I go ahead and talk about the rice? Yeah, you can go ahead while I'm slicing the fish. Meanwhile, go ahead. Dr. Langoni is slicing the sea bass. Our rice liquid has already gone down. So now we are gonna pour the peas and carrots on top like this. And we, ooh, sorry. We have the fancy pimentos and we're just going to lay it for garnish. And obviously once, once we mix it, then everything will complement. A variation to the arroz con pollo, the chicken rice, Cubans add beer and it, it, uh, it is also a very good taste to the rice. So if you want to try with beer, you usually use a can. Let me lower the heat. And by the way, the ceviche essentially is, uh, is cooked by the, by the lemon juice. So you don't actually have to, to cook the fish. Uh, some people may think, well, but I, I don't like raw fish, but it doesn't really taste like raw fish. So if you haven't tried yet, I strongly recommend that you try a ceviche whenever, whenever possible. It's, very tasteful and delicious, especially if you are, you know, on a hot summer day at the beach, you know, enjoy a ceviche with a cold beer. That's, that's ideal for summertime. It's very refreshing, very healthy and very tasty. Here are the coconut cookies and they're going for the oven.
déjalo aquí. 15. Now I'm about done here with the slicing of the corvina. Okay, now we're gonna do is we are gonna add the other ingredients. We are gonna start with the onion. Uh, for one pound of corvina, we are gonna use about a cup and a half of onions. Once you lower I for it to simmer, you cover the rice for it to finish cooking. Okay, here we have a cup and a half. You're gonna have uh, a little over a cup of celery. a little or less than that is okay. We are gonna add the cilantro. Okay, here. Now I'm gonna do a little a little piece of the hot pepper. Have a little pepper, whatever you you can find. Just a little piece. You don't want too much of that. Uh, very thin slice so that if somebody bites a piece of that, it's not too hot. How are we doing with the, the rice? Mom? The rice is almost ready. Good. The real challenge here was to, you know, be able to prepare something within the, the time restrictions. And uh, that's why we selected the menu that you could possibly work in about 40, 45 minutes. So let me add this little bit of hot pepper here. You will need to wash your hands very yes, well it, because yeah, it's it burns be hot. your hand. It's very, very spicy and very, very hot. So we need to wash my hands. And we need to add a little bit of salt. Where's the salt, Valerie? Okay, here's the salt. A bit of salt here. Now I need a spoon to mix these things here. Okay, I would rather you use. And I'm going to grab the lemon juice. We have here freshly squeezed lemon juice. Oops. Oops. We're not cooked. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let me mix this a little bit. Try 
try to move the fish up so we can do a little more salt here. And what we're gonna do then is to add about a cup and a half of lemon juice. It should has to be enough to cover uh, all the ingredients, okay? Because you have to marinate these very well. So I'm gonna pour the lemon juice in here. Which is enough to over everything. And we mix these very nicely. Make sure that all ingredients are uniformly mixed. Now you add sauce to taste. If you feel that you need a little more, just go ahead and add a little more. No, con papel toalla. Busca bastante papel toalla. Del otro lado abre. Okay, so the ceviche is now ready, and all we need to do then is close this, put in the fridge, and it's going to stay in the fridge for about four hours. Okay. Uh, of course, I have one already prepared that we are going to present you. And I think what we can do now, it's a start the presentation part. So let me get rid of this little mess here. Wow, looks good. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're gonna have a nice lunch here at the cafeteria of the dorms. I had mixed it so the fancy pimentos and the peas and carrots are all incorporated into the rice. So, and the arroz con pollo, it's supposed to be, it, it, it must be moist. Not mushy, but moist. Okay, let's start then uh, preparing the ceviche too. For presentation purposes, what we are going to do is <clears throat> now we are going to start with uh, a few pieces of lettuce just just for you know decoration purposes. You're not actually going to eat the lettuce. Just put a couple of pieces in each dish. Here are the cookies. We, are, we actually took the cookies a little bit, uh, a few minutes before the time, because this oven is really high. So they are kind of smooshy. I'm just gonna take out some. Now, can I borrow a spoon? No. I have spoons over there, Dr. Lingoni. Thank you. Now we're gonna do then, this is the ceviche, it's, it's ready, okay? And uh, just mix a little bit, make sure that everything is uniform and nice. And now we're gonna serve the ceviche. Go ahead, please. And uh, 
the ceviche is ready and to accompany the ceviche normally we sure yeah we use uh, some crackers Okay. And here are the ceviches. <clears throat> ceviches are ready. I'm going to try a little piece here. Mm. Very good, very good. Especially if I had a beer here, that would be perfect. But if you have a ceviche as an appetizer, uh, chicken rice and coconut cookies, you are done. That's a, a full meal, okay? So Valerie's finishing the presentation of the chicken with rice. It looks very much like a a paella, but the only meat that we use in the in the chicken rice, of course, is chicken. Uh, not the paella valenciana that uses also rabbit. And. There are the cookies. We have uh, arroz con pollo and the Panamanian ceviche. And I think we are right on time. We are a little bit over, five minutes over. <laughs> well, sorry for that. Now, if anybody has any questions, it looks absolutely delicious. Thank you so much to both of you. This is incredible. Um, we actually are going to turn over to our associate director here in Tallahassee, Lou Blenman. Um, she has a couple of uh, comments and thoughts to share with everyone. And then Dr. Lingoni and Valerie, don't go anywhere because we will turn back to you for some Q&A in just a moment. All right. Um, thank you very much for, for that. Uh, phenomenal cooking display. I'm now hungry for lunch. Um, so I guess your timing is very good. Um, I want to uh, thank Hannah and her team for putting together um, this alumni week. It's been a fantastic week of um, food and fellowship and connecting with, with uh, old friends or not so old friends, but long friends maybe. Um, and so it's been a lot of fun. I'm sure it's something that we will continue to do. Um, so keep an eye out for future, um, I don't know, episodes or alumni week uh, events, that type of thing, or perhaps just other alumni things that are not around homecoming or, or alumni week. Um, Carlos and, uh, and your team, uh, I really want to thank you for putting all this together. I, I I can tell that it was a, a good team effort, Valerie. Um, you're a chef extraordinaire, whether you wanna uh, uh, pretend that you're not. I, I've, I have to say, I've never met a Pan Panamanian woman who wasn't a good cook. So um, it looks, looks to me from afar like you fit right into that. So thank you for sharing those things. I can't wait to make, uh, I'm a big fan of coconut. So that'll be the first thing that I make. 
Um, and I want to thank uh, 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 colleagues and, and uh, staff and former colleagues from Tallahassee for joining us. Um, I think several folks and alumni, uh, I think several folks who are on the call have been on on maybe even all of our, our uh, sessions this week. Um, so you can, can uh, corroborate my excitement and enthusiasm about how well things have gone. Um, uh, we want to keep connected with our alumni, and this is uh, um, one of the um, one of the ways that we're we're going to do that um, or continue to to, to do that. Um, I've, I'm pretty blown away with how with the participation we've had, and I'm grateful for all of you for for uh, sticking with us through the week. Um, I do want to talk a, about a, a few things. Um, uh, that uh, we've been been working on and partnerships that we've we've had um, partly um, just for our uh, from our regular operations, but then partly um, as a result of the pandemic, we have um, have uh, developed some more. And you'll forgive me for being a little distracted. We're under a tornado warning. So if I, if I see something and run to get back in my closet, you'll understand why. Um, uh, so the Career Center is, is one of our key partners on, on campus. Um, and uh, one, one way that, that you can get involved um, with our students is to, to serve as a professional mentor. Um, it's a, a, a relatively new program, but what is what is new for sure is this uh, is an international programs designation. So when you sign up, you can you can say um, that you're want to have an international programs connection. Um, it gives current FSU students the opportunity to connect with alumni, friends of the university, employers. Um, and they can get mentorship and professional development advice, guidance, those types of things. It's entirely online. So um, if you're located in Panama and end up talking with a student in Tallahassee or maybe somewhere else in the country, um, that doesn't matter. It, it's one of the great things that has come out of the pandemic. I think we're all um, much, much more comfortable and better at doing things through Zoom. So we encourage you to, to participate in that if, if you're so inclined to work with, with some of our students. Um, we also ask um, that you consider other ways to, to volunteer your time and talents. Um, we, uh, as you know, we have study centers in four locations, uh, well, three locations, and then a full branch campus in Panama. Um, we love to have alumni come and do um, uh, presentations or panel discussions, um, guest lectures. All, there are all types of, of opportunities for you to be involved. If you happen to, to either have connections or work in a field where you have, um, have resources that could be uh, utilized for um, students to have internship placements, in another country, um, we'd, we'd love to, to work with you to identify some of, some of those. Um, uh, our students get great, um, great experience from uh, working with, with companies so they learn more about their careers before they uh, embark on them. Um, we have um, also worked really closely uh, within the last year, especially with the FSU Foundation um, they've been fantastic at, at supporting events like this one and, and helping us um, to work with alumni who are interested in providing scholarships or other types of support for international programs or the Panama campus or for our students. Um, so there's some contact information there at the bottom if, if you're interested in talking with somebody Certainly um, any of us in, in the IP office or in the Panama office could connect you, but there's also Sarishni Patel's contact information. Um, and and we'd, we'd be happy to, to work with you to, to identify how, how you can, can support our students in IP. So with that, I think I'll turn it back over um, 
to Hannah and Carlos and, and Valerie to answer questions. Thank you so much, Lou. And yes, we would love to open it up to some questions. If anyone has any questions about the dishes that were prepared or any questions about Panama or questions for Valerie and Dr. Langoni, you're welcome to put them in the chat and we can certainly read them out loud and have them answer them. Um, so if you have any questions, let us know. There are lots of comments about how delicious it all looks, Valerie and Dr. Langoni. <laughs> Great. <Yay! laughs> It's not looking like we have any questions. I do want to be mindful and respectful that Leon County is currently under a tornado warning and it is torrential downpouring out of my window. So perhaps folks are a little bit nervous and would rather maybe hop off the call. So we'll be respectful of that. Um, Dr. Langoni and Valerie, thank you so, so much for this opportunity. Thank you for showing us the delicious food and how we can also do this at home. Um, so everyone make sure that you check out those recipes. If you didn't cook along with us today, I know that I will absolutely be cooking those in the future. Um, but thank you for joining us for International Programs Alumni Week and especially for In the Kitchen with Panama. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Hannah, for organizing these and everybody that attended today was a real night. And uh, until the next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.